ok. So, now I mean this I am going to conclude the route to turbulence, how turbulence arise. So, what we did so far, we first showed, I took one example, I mean there are, is example specific. So, how turbulence arises in a pipe, in relevant, relative air, in stars, they are all different. But there is a certain pattern. So, we will get instability, then we will get uh, some kind of nonlinear saturation, stability will make the mode grow, but nonlinearity will come over and saturate it. Then, so saturation was Lorentz equation. Then patterns and chaos come. Okay. So, uh, today's class I will show you how patterns come in the relevant art and then turbulence come. So, uh, so we will get a picture you know how turbulence come. Of course, after that we will start doing physics of turbulence, Kolmogorov uh, theory and so on. So, but today's class is just covering these three topics for relevant art convection and, and of course, a huge topic. So, I am going to take simple examples of relevant art and show you this. Okay. So, the book which I am covering, this is covered in this book, one of the chapters. Okay. So, chapter, I think chapter 7, chapter 8. So, a saturation, instability, saturation and uh, patterns, you can read from here. Okay. So, a, I told you about this, uh, uh, instability and saturation. Okay. Saturation is a critical point and this is common in many, many systems. So, we nonlinearity will saturate, otherwise it is unphysical, no? things cannot simply keep growing. Now, we will we'll show you something called secondary bifurcation. Now, what is bifurcation? So, bifurcation is change of behavior or in standard like a road bifurcates into another road. So, you are going along a road nicely driving or riding a bicycle, suddenly you find the road ends and you get a new road. So, a new pattern, new behavior. So, this is called bifurcation. Now, uh, we already have two behaviors uh, which we studied, instability then saturation, but we can have more complex behavior. So, this, so remember uh, I showed in uh, Lorentz equation, uh, my one of the modes, so all three modes, but one one u one one mode. So, it was 0 before uh, r equal to 1, small r equal to 1, then it goes becomes like square root r minus 1. So, it is a constant value mode, but it does not remain constant throughout if I increase my rally. My parameter is temperature difference between the plate, then we find that uh, things start becoming time dependent. Okay. So, we will see, so this will, so this was one road you got another road, but another road will start somewhere, okay. but we need a more sophisticated model. Lorentz equation does not give you realistic bifurcation, there is a bifurcation of Lorentz equation. In fact, at around r equal to 24.7 I think, uh, there is a bifurcation called Hopf. So, it becomes chaotic beyond this, okay. uh, but we will have better model and that has more realistic bifurcation for Fresnel number large okay. and that model we call, I call it 7 mode model. So, what are the modes I should pick? So, please pay attention to this uh, modes. So, if you recall we had 101 and 002, these two I had. So, these are wave numbers. Huh? So, for with 101 how many modes uh, I had two modes. So, u 11 and theta 1 1, well 1 0 1 and theta 1 0 1. So, k y was 0, it was 2 d mode, so it has k z x and k z and theta 0 0 2. So, theta 0 0 2 was brought in for nonlinear saturation, instability had only these two u 1 0 1 theta 1 0 1, but I brought 0 0 2 this theta 0 0 2, in fact it is only theta 0 0 2 for Lorentz, but I introduce now two more modes, uh, two more wave numbers 0 1 1 and 1 1 2. Okay. So, what is 0 1 1 mode? So, 1 0 1 mode is k x and k z, so it has variations in x z plane. What is 0 1 1? Is k y is 1, 
and k z is 1, k y and k z. So, k y is 1 and k z is 1. So, what does it give you? It is a y z dependent. So, imagine the role is going in x z plane. So, this is y axis, but now other other roles go in that direction. So, we have 3 D structure where one role is going like this, other role is going like that. And they will interact via nonlinear interaction requires third mode. I mean, how can these two interact? So, it will interact via 1, 1, 2. So, if I put a minus sign here, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, they add up to 0. So, these guys form a triad. Okay. So, this nonlinear coupling between k 1, k 2, k 3 will give you rich pattern. So, I will only state the results. So, you will find this derivation in this book, but well, I am not really urging you to look at it, but if you liquid the derivation, you will also see how to compute this evolution. So, I have this how many modes I got? Modes. Now, these are wave numbers, there are four wave numbers, but each of them, well, at least these three of them have velocity field and temperature, but that each wave number corresponds to has two velocity modes from clear hearing, right? But I keep only one of them. So you keep only u two, u two in clear hearing. Okay, so there's u one and u two. So I keep only u two for these three. So u u of u two u two of clear hearing in this and temperature for each of them. So theta theta theta. So already six modes. What about this one? Does it have velocity in this? There is no velocity. Incompressible condition tells you that there is no velocity for this. You will keep only theta. So, there are 7 modes. And 7 modes will have 7 differential equations associated with them. So, these are the 7 equations. Okay. Now, these are used with box which is uh, root 2 box. So, this is a root 2 along horizontal, vertical is 1, and it is a 3D box. So, root 2, root 2 and 1. Okay. So, root 2 is because if you remember uh, instability condition gives you pi by root 2 is a k c. So, just sit down well is the lowest wave number. Okay. Uh, lowest wave number associated with row, lowest Rayleigh number. Okay. Anyway, this is a choice we, we, uh, we made when we made this model. Okay. So, for seeing the behavior of this model, we take frontal number 1 and vary r, small r. Small r is Rayleigh by Rayleigh critical. So, this is small r is appearing here. You see small r many places. Frontal number is also there, but p r I set it to 1. Okay. Now, what are behavior we see? So, before r equal to 1, what happens? Small r equal to 1. What is the solution of this equation? Stable solution, all zeros. So, there is no convection only conduction. So, small r is less than 1 is 0 conduction, but as soon as r becomes greater than 1 we get these solutions. So, one mode is 0 0 0 which is unstable this becomes unstable, but these modes are stable. Okay. Now, this I derived in the last class. So, b is a parameter and square root r minus 1 if you remember square root r minus 1. So, so there are two choices. So, there is a basically you can change the see the sign change. So, this is a offset by minus 1. Okay. So, these are if you look at the butterfly Lorentz equation you know the pictures in in a, in a screens you see this butterfly like this like this. So, these are the two two solutions right now fixed point solutions so or no butterfly it only it will all come in either hit this point or that point. Okay. There are no four solutions, there are only two solutions. So, these are eye of the butterfly. Okay. Butterfly we will see, we will see a bit later. So, this is still small r equal to in model around 13. So, till r equal to 13 we get these solution is stable solution. Okay. This has been being done by one student Vikas, he well I solved it uh, not fully, but then Vikas this is there in the book. But then Vikas did a full bifurcation diagram. So, what he finds that for it will 0 then it goes like that, it is on 13 
the behavior of the system changes and these modes starts oscillating okay so these oscillations means they are time dependent now oscillations mean time dependent presently they are time independent these these modes are time independent till r equal to 13 now it becomes time dependent and this is a time series a function of time okay so i would if we plot time so look at carefully one, so i am plotting only the velocity mode so velocity mode is one u101 is oscillating around 0 0.5 around half in my units huh? I mean, these are all non dimensionalized so this is around half right you can see this oscillations what about 0 1 1 and 1 1 2 they oscillate around 0 so this blue red uh, dark blue is a 1 1 2 1 1 2 and green is 0 1 1 1 so they oscillate around 0 so they were 0 before that but now they are getting they are born and killed born and killed right? so it is here become 0 then negative so it is it is is going like that now 101 is I have plotted one temperature mode it is like u101 except the factor r okay so it comes it is see if this is finite oscillate around finite value theta 101 also will oscillate around a finite value okay so all these modes are starting to oscillate even 0 0 to oscillate so time dependence has come and technically this I am not going to do in this class, but this is called half bifurcation and the first one which was from 0 to non 0 square root r minus 1 is called pitch fork super critical pitch fork I mean these are the names given to this bifurcation pitch fork you know road has got into pitch fork like pitch fork in the half is a scientist name mathematician so there is no uh, English interpretation of Hoff is over a mathematician. So, Hoff said that uh, higher dimension modes start well is basically more than 2D. So, it has more degrees of freedom and well uh, it can uh, show these oscillations. Okay, if I increase it, so this is beyond 14 or so. If I increase it further then this system becomes chaotic. Now, it has it has more rich feature which we have not explored this model done by us I mean so this is our model okay so before I go to chaos I want to show you something interesting now these are physical interpretation of this oscillation now you need to understand so it, it, it takes some time so the plate uh, the cold hot plate is below the screen and cold plate is above the screen this is a mid plane cut okay please remember this is not uh, so, convection is 3D, so I need to take a cut, you know, so just to make it visible. Now, red is hot and blue is cold. So, what does it mean here? So, hot here, just put my uh, look at my uh, thing, is coming up, you know, hot is rising in the mid plane and cold is going down. So, had it been a single roll, hot would have gone up, hot, and cold would have gone down, right, hot, cold. So, so imagine, so hot is going up and coming down. So, that will be 2D roll is this correct. So, it strips of hot cold hot cold hot cold strips in 2D. Okay. So, this is a section if I look at from the side view it I will see rolls if I see from the top view you will see hot cold strips, but now I do not see quite a hot uh, strip, but I see variations now you see there is a there is kind of one one uh, hot uh, strip, but it is changing. So, wh what can you make out of this? So, there is another role in this direction. Now, you have to follow my uh, my pen. Uh, so, this is what. So, can you see the red lines which I am drawing to draw? So, let us try to see in green. So, this green lines. So, there are role in that direction and there are role in that direction. This is a cross 2D, a 3D role. Now, he, it is strong here, but it decreases because the role here there is a hot coming from roll of this side as well as from that side. So, this guy becomes super hot you know super like now it is super super everything. So, so, this is hot, but here it has become weak because here it was going down from the this roll, but this roll is whole thing is going up and going down from here to there. 
so these will become uh, uh, thinner so this uh, this kind of uh, fat thin fat thin is because of three dimensional structure of the of the system and this is called asymmetric square why is it called asymmetric because one role is strong other role is weak you will always find that this xz role is dominant it will never lose its xz character so other role is coming and going now you saw in the in the time series in the previous slide here so this is the role which is going around oscillating around 0 0.5 so these are dominant 101 but 011 comes and goes so when it is here then we got only 101 i mean you, uh, 011 is uh, 0 of course theta 112 is uh, this, this mode is u112 is present okay so u112 also has some something to do but let's ignore it you know i mean you can't understand everything is that clear to everyone they are interacting no, they are not. Uh, they, they, these two rows, how can this is one direction, the other direction? These two, the two different. Uh, they can't never make it disappear, or they can't become one. Okay. So we will. I'll show you in the movie. It will become a bit clear. So this is at one time, but this changes with time. It's dynamic. Okay. So please see the movie and uh, see what happens. Right now, in fact, the movie at the time t equal to zero. It is basically a 2D role. The other guy is there, but it's weak. And some 112 effect is also there right, in this. 112 is not. I mean, 112 is strong. But let's see what happens as function of time. So now this other role is weak. had become strong in between. Now it has become weak again. Strong again. The Y Z role weak. So, y z strong here is y z strong that is why it is like square you know, in the middle, but the y z role is never becomes as strong as x z role. So, it can never kill it. Okay. So, it is called asymmetric time dependent square it is a time dependent structure. So, time dependent asymmetric square I should say. Okay. So, this is what we see now uh, so is that clear so this is the interpretation of that uh, structure and we see from our simple model seven mode model and this also is seen in real experiments of course real experiments has more complexity but these seven modes capture this feature that's why this this models are not uh, uh, you know just for the sake of constructing it you know it has physical meaning and one more so the nonlinear interaction terms you know where I have been following it 101, 011, 112 understand what, how the structures look like, how to compute the nonlinearity all they are important useful. Okay. Now, if I if I go further so this I do not remember R is I think 70 or something. Okay. If I go further then this is a 3D picture. So, this is called phase space. The earlier picture was real space picture. Now, now present picture is a is a phase space. This is called phase space. Okay, this is not real space. So I draw this axis was zero one zero one, theta one zero one, and minus theta zero zero two. So it is so it's like butterfly. You can see, you know, it is not same butterfly as Lorentz equation, but this is more realistic. Not fully realistic because in real life, uh, there are not only seven modes. There are more modes. But seven modes is reasonably accurate. I mean, we've done a simulation. Uh, he's doing simulation. Still, uh, uh, we see the same pattern in simulation, but slightly different R, small R. Okay. So this chaos is also seen, but a different R. So structure will differ, but qualitatively we'll see same behavior. So this was seven mode model. Now this is a paper written by one in our lab. This is a was a postdoc long back. So uh, we again make a model which is which has more modes and but we do also do simulations and generally accepted picture for large okay pranal number I defined or not defined I did not define. So, pranal number is nu by kappa this is called pranal number. Okay. So, pranal number 1 and beyond system has one behavior a pranal number 1 well basically small. So, point 10 by minus 2 10 by minus 3 they have different behavior because in one of them viscosity becomes too small other one uh, 
kappa becomes too small ok. So, these are two different systems anyway for p r 10 and so on the this is a good picture. So, this how this is called bifurcation diagram ok. So, so this small r so it is bifurcating into this pitch fork f p means pitch fork well x here f p means fixed point. Okay. and this by a pitch fork bifurcation super critical ok super critical. So, uh, do not worry about name, but if you see this pattern uh, you can remember the name you know pitch fork and this goes all the way up to here in simulations around 25 actually I think it is a model it is not a simulation it is a model. Uh, I do not remember some 20 odd model and half. So, this oscillation, so this is called oscillations OS. So, the oscillation which I showed you oscillating asymmetric square, you know. So, this is what we get in experiments and some experiments, you know, I mean, we will report this oscillation. Then, system becomes quasi periodic. Now, what is quasi periodic? Now, quasi periodic is uh, so, uh, we uh, uh, people know about quasi periodic or do I need to well let me make a small remark. So, in a cycle tube, so if you have two frequencies which are related by the irrational number omega 1 by omega 2 is irrational. Then system shows some interesting behavior. So, just imagine that you have a cycle tube. Now, if so, here one motion is going around like this one frequency. So, take a op, so it has two angles cycle tube has two angle no one angle is going around uh, like that other one is going like that. Now, these two angles are function of time in fact linear. So, theta 1 is omega 1 t theta 2 is omega 2 t. Okay. So, you can locate a point given theta 1 and theta 2 yes or no. So, it is a tube. So, radius are fixed r 1 r 2 only theta 1 theta 2. So, there is every point has unique angle. Now, this point will move as function of time. So, what is the if omega 2 is 0 what will be the value uh, like let us say theta 1 is this one and theta 2 is that angle. So, if omega 2 is 0 then what is the behavior? You just go in a circle. If omega 2 is non zero, but omega 1 is 0, then it goes like that. If both are non zero, if but let us say omega 1 and omega 2 are equal, then it will go around, but it will come back helical thing. But if they are irrational, let us say root 2, then what happens? It can never come back. So, it will just fill up the whole tube. We wait for long, well, it just keep a fill up the whole tube. And this is called quasi periodic, it is not periodic, but you see this looks like periodic, but if I just put two frequencies and then it is quasi periodic. No, 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 Lorentz Butterfly is chaotic and uh, so chaos can happen in many ways. So, this is quasi periodic. So, you can see this this green thing is filled up the whole region, but of course, the filling up will happen in the phase space, huh? but you can get some idea from this filling up. There is no space leaving left in between here. Okay? But this is chaos, the pink is chaos. Now, chaos, if you see for I mean, there edges are not edges, there are uh, unfilled region. So, so to get chaos from for this system, the third frequency is born. So, you might have heard this word called three frequency implies chaos, or period three implies chaos. Have you guys read any book? I mean, who has done course on nonlinear dynamics? I mean, anyone of you? Okay. So, the, you heard this word period 3 implies chaos. No? This third frequency is born here and that makes the system chaotic. So, this is another frequency is born here. Okay. So, this analysis is done in the paper and that leads to chaos. Anyway, if you do a course on chaos, you will see this. And uh, so, we, we are not doing chaos, we are doing turbulence which is more complex than chaos, but this is source chaos. 
if I go further down, then I see turbulence. Now, one question people ask is what is the difference between chaos and turbulence? Okay. Now, there is no one answer, I mean, you can only give several answers, so I will give only some answers. Huh? So, the number of modes in chaotic systems will be large, but generally small. Large means maybe 10, 20, 15, well 3 is enough. So, this was proven by York. So, we need more than 2, more than 2 your system can become chaotic. Every system with theta is not chaotic. I mean I can just say theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, this is not chaotic, it can be quasi periodic or periodic. But if there is sufficient non-linearity and you satisfy the properties for chaos and the system becomes chaotic. Okay. But system is 15, 16, 20, you can those modes will show this thing which is not periodic. Well, the, the chaos one definition which is common for everyone is called sensitivity to, in, sensitivity to initial condition. Okay. So, that what it means is if I take in phase space, take two points which are caused by which are separated by distance epsilon initial condition and if you wait for some time then they will start diverging and this gap will go as exponential e to the lambda t, but they simply do not diverge and go to infinity they come back. So, the region of phase space where they move around is finite region if it is diverging and going to infinity then that is not uh, that is not interesting. For example, x dot equal to alpha x that also diverges no alpha positive, but that is not that is just a diverging system no no chaos, but if system has sufficient nonlinearity that it does not go to infinity it is like we have put nonlinearity for saturation and so on and so on and it comes back, but the distance is on the average expanding for small times as exponential divergence. So, these are local, so lamb, lamb, this is for short time, then again I can bring them closer two points, then again they diverge. So, these are diverging all the time, you know, you bring them they never are they are diverging all the time. And uh, so, this is what we find in chaotic systems. In turbulent systems, the number of degrees of freedom was huge. So, typically you can have 1 million and uh, this divergence now we have 1 million degrees of freedom is uh, I am not going to draw phase space. People do not even think of the phase space picture, but you can take two particles in turbulent systems and see their divergence. You know I mean two spoke particles in, in, a, in a turbulent system and see how they move and their typical the, the, the delta r goes as delta t times 3 half. So, can you see the difference between this and this one? One of them is, one of them is exponential, other one is a power law, it is a power law no, x to the power n, other one is e to the power x, okay, which is faster. Okay, anyway, so that that you think about. So this is called Richardson law. Okay, now uh, so these are some differences, but turbulence is typically uh, more degrees of freedom. Power law divergence. Power laws are typically there in uh, turbulence. So energy spectrum, which I will cover later, is a power law in turbulence, but I believe is exponential in chaos. It is not very well reported, but it should be exponential in uh, chaos. So, what I mean is if I go to larger k, you know, wave numbers, if you plot, so now we have u of k, well, velocity, no? so velocity of k, Fourier mode we have u 1 1, u 2 2. So, if I increase my k, then how does the energy grow? Energy typically will decrease when you go to higher wave numbers and mod square of this one, it will be exponential, both will decay, but is exponential in, in chaotic system, but power law k to the power minus alpha in 
turbulent system. Okay, so we know from Kolmogorov theory that alpha is three half, uh, five thirds, which I will do it in maybe I mean uh, next week or so. Okay. So these are some differences. So, but first you typically will get chaos, then turbulence. Okay, you are generating more and more modes, and uh, you are tending towards more and more disorders, um, stronger interactions. Okay. So, this for prime number large. Now, we can look at prime number small. So, I will show you what happens with 0 prime number. Okay. So, this was one run again we did in our lab, it was even longer 10 years back and uh, so it is quite interesting. So, 0 prime number. Now, so convection is not we will do in this course, maybe one lecture towards the end or one or two lectures. Yeah. So, this is a Fourier mode u 1 0 1. So, it is a z component. So, this we at that time we were studying z component, but it is like same 1 0 1 of 7 mode model. Okay. So, y axis is maximum value of the mode. If time dependent, then I will have to I mean how do I draw in this picture. So, one thing is to kind of see the min and max. So, we, we kept for this extremum positive value mod of that. Okay. It could also be negative, so we just kept the positive mode. Okay. Now, tip, so in the, in my frontal number small, uh, frontal number large, P S six and so on. I was going from the left. To, I was going like that, and then it became fixed point, then uh, periodic, uh, periodic, then quasi periodic. But from frontal number zero, it was wiser to go from the right. From large frontal number decrease, a large Rayleigh number, but not too large. Eh? So it is near the onset. So this is 1.4 times 657. So this is near the onset. This is not too far away from the onset, but frontal number zero is extremely chaotic. Viscosity is basically very small. It's not zero, but very small. And very small viscosity, you can imagine, no? The fluid turbulence, the fluid system you have studied. Zero viscosity when system is give any energy, it has just become very violent. So it was good idea to start. So the system is chaotic at the onset itself. This is known that system is at the onset system is chaotic. So it started from the right. So this is called SQ square. So first picture we saw from 1.3, 1.35 is square. Now, you can see the square pattern. So, here both the roles, this role and that role, both are equal amplitude, asymmetric square and unequal amplitude, right. Now, so you, you, I hope you see the difference. I mean, this is asymmetric square. In fact, I exactly copied from the previous one, it is asymmetric square, but this is symmetric square, there is a difference. This is a bit stretched, I mean, this is not the best picture, but yeah. Uh, it is bit uh, not I mean I think. So, uh, this one is going up roll and this is going down roll and they are forming a square pattern. Uh, 4 hot and cold is in between and 4 cold and hot is in between okay. and this can happen when u 1 0 1 equal to u 0 1 1. Okay. So, we, we need this otherwise this is this will not happen. Okay. It is not drawn here, uh, you are drawing only one axis, one, one mode. Fine. Now, this bifurcates here into A s q asymmetric square. Now, but this asymmetric square is not function of time, it does not change with time, it is fixed in time. Now, asymmetric square can come time dependent as well as time independent. Here is time independent, you will get pattern like this. But my u101 is bigger than u011 or smaller, they are not equal anymore, and you get asymmetric. Okay. All solutions are possible. Well, I mean, actually, if you look at the fixed point, so we so this is u101 and u011, and it was symmetric here, this one is symmetric, but this became asymmetric 
by bisector getting like that. So this this angle should be equal by symmetry. Just from symmetry argument. Okay. So either here u one zero one is bigger and here u zero one one is bigger. Fair enough. Now this goes all the way up to here. This line. So I'm going in closer and closer to the onset. It's going other way around. Then you start getting this red. Okay. Now. So these arrows, you can see this 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 arrow. Okay. Now this this pattern starts to oscillate in time. Here it wasn't oscillating, but there it now starts oscillating, and it oscillated exactly like what we saw in the previous movie. Okay, you'll see that. It's in fact I've copied the same movie. It's, it's the same movie. It's blinking, no? So it is oscillating. Now, what happens to this phase space picture when it starts oscillating? In time, so this will become instead of a point, it will oscillate. In fact, it is here. This is the phase space picture. So, this was this was the two earlier points, asymmetric square. Point is a not changing in time, right? I mean, point is will remain there, but here it's changing. So, the mean max value is this one, mean value is this one, for zero one one, but. One zero one will be oscillating from here to there. So this oscillating, it is never well. It is oscillates around this mean value. Huh? It doesn't oscillate around zero. Please keep in mind. So this is a bit different than what we were doing before. It oscillates around this mean mean value. But which one is bigger for the red one? Zero one one is bigger. Okay. So zero one one bigger means. So this is not the picture. This movie is not the one. This movie corresponds to the blue one. Blue one has one zero one bigger. So the x zero is bigger, but y zero is weaker. Okay. So this is we can draw these conclusions from this picture. This one is unstable. So the red one has become unstable. The fixed point exists, but is unstable. Now. So this red is there up to here. Here, then what happens after that? It is even green. In fact, so as behavior changes further. So these are further bifurcation. These are called bifurcations. You know, changing. Now it turns out the red and blue. So these are called limit cycles. Okay. So this is the language of nonlinear dynamics. Limit cycles. Of course. Is a projection. Uh, my system is much bigger, but we, if we take a cut in this, then I see this. This so the phase space structure is bigger. It's not only a, a circle. Is living in thirteen dimension. This is thirteen dimension model. Okay. So we are seeing a projection. Okay. Now this one is called SQOR square oscillating square. Okay. So these two limit cycles touch each other. In fact, the touch here, touch that black dot. So we are we are hitting that fixed point, and there is a lot of interesting things happen there. This is called homoclinic tangle. Okay, so this is all nonlinear dynamics. So it, if you do the course, you'll we'll, we'll see all this stuff. So these were, you can see this. These two limit cycles are merged into become a one limit cycle. Now, how does it go? It comes down. It doesn't go up. It comes and it goes in that path. Comes like that and goes here. So it has become one limit cycle. You saw that here, here like that. So here it will be which uh, one role is more dominant. Here other role is more dominant. In between, this is symmetric. So square pattern we will get in between. So one role symmetric, then other role. And then it goes back and forth. Okay, so this is called SQOR, relaxation oscillation uh, square pattern. So let's see this movie. So this is square pattern. Okay. Now this role will become x along x direction will become dominant. Now this like very much other guy has become zero. Huh? So we are hitting that axis. Now square again. So roll in that direction. So 
so it goes here yeah, is a periodic periodic boundary condition in fact there is a set of rules here yeah. it, it is just infinite so x axis y axis are infinite you can just think of infinite ok so uh, we get s q r and if i go further down then i get we get chaos so the, here there is a chaos which has some different types of behavior but this is why uh, this this fixed point which, uh, this un, the line the dashed line becomes important it is hitting here and that in fact is leading to chaos called homoclinic tangle okay so this is a uh, you hit an unstable point then you become chaotic that's what is a picture here okay so i showed you the picture for large frontal number how system becomes chaotic and small frontal number how system become chaotic but this is small r is one my turbulence is somewhere here in this region okay so i do not call this turbulence there are more modes but it's still called chaotic okay now we'll summarize this in the next slide root 2 turbulence now this is a picture which was drawn i think by ruby krishnamurti yeah so r krishnamurti so you, you can look at fixed point uh, sorry for frontal number large let's say frontal number 10 if i increase my rayleigh number so i have conduction state is rayleigh critical no convection then convection so steady roll so this is fixed point steady means no time dependent but then oscillating roll what is oscillating roll that asymmetric square like oscillation no so we get oscillation then two frequencies so instead of one frequency I had two frequency which led to quasi periodicity it need not be quasi periodic but if they irrationally related then it's quasi periodic so two frequencies then chaos after that turbulence so picture is like it just goes more and more complex more modes so chaos then turbulence so this is turbulence region so high rally number and turbulence if i have a small frontal number what happens this region shrink so we can get turbulence for so let's say 10 power minus 2 i can get turbulence at a smaller rally number relatively so this regions basically are shrinking you see i mean here i have to go to larger rally number is larger frontal number is more viscous no viscous it is more so you need more power there is too much friction but here you do not need too much power it is already less frictious less frictional um, less viscous so we get conduction then steady 2d then oscillations and chaos and then turbulence Okay. So, low frontal number systems are more turbulent uh, typically for given alley. Okay, so, that is about it. Thank you.